It's time for pretty good news from the Wisconsin Maritime Museum. Welcome aboard. I'm Shane Lee of the Wisconsin Maritime Museum in Manitowoc. The old saying goes that a picture is worth a thousand words, but sometimes there is no picture available. Manitowoc artist Dave DeZale looks to provide those missing pictures from local maritime history. Dave DeZeo grew up in Manitowoc surrounded by the area's maritime tradition. His grandfather shared stories of his role in building the World War II submarines at Manitowoc Shipbuilding Company. DeZeo's love for that history pushed him to retell those stories, not with words, but rather with paint. Two such works show USS Copia's arrival in Manitowoc in 1970. And I, myself, um, you know, 50 years ago, would have been standing right there. It was a big day. It was kind of an iconic day for the city of Manitowoc. And that's like, you remember certain things. Um, like, I don't remember all the car ferries that were going because it was kind of a common thing. But I, I do remember seeing the submarine coming. One painting shows Cobia being towed past DeZale's childhood home. The other depicts the submarine making its way up the Manitowoc River past the old Elks Club, which is now the lot for the farmer's market. Because there's no photos uh, that are exactly like what I'm trying to do, it's an illustration that can explain a little bit of the of what's happening that day. You can see, see all the people in the background and you can see you know the, the boats going through and you can see the surroundings and I tried to make the surroundings be 1970 surroundings. The artist also has painted several scenes of local shipwrecks. DeZeo uses photographs and information from the Wisconsin Historical Society to attempt to recreate the moment of the sinking. There are experts in the area and so I like to try to show uh, prior to be being finished, I tried to show that, and then they say, oh, no, this is wrong. <laughs> you know? So I say, it's not too late, I can fix it. You know, that's one thing you can do with paint. You know? <laughs> While the painter tries to remain historically accurate, he admits to using a bit of artistic license. One such case is the depiction of scow schooner Alaska. A house-moving company attempted and failed to fix the ship. DeZeo decided to show the effort with a team of horses, which may or may not have been present. Uh, this is a little bit of artistic interpretation. They're, they're, I don't know, maybe, you know, I don't think they really had the machinery back then to bring big trucks and moving equipment back then. I think during the period when this was done, this is how they did it. In addition to painting, Dave takes plenty of photos of shipwrecks, both from his plane and during dives. One of his favorite wrecks to explore is Francis Hinton, just north of the Manitowoc River. DeZeo likes the wreck for its upside-down positioning and the humorous story of the ship's crew. There was hundreds of people on shore from the city of Manitowoc at the time that were watching them, and they all made it to shore, and, and life went on. Well, the next day, the Coast Guard from Two Rivers uh, comes down, and they take their life-saving boat out there to rescue the crew, which nobody told them was already on shore having a steak dinner. Those stories are what DeZeo wants to preserve. There are no photographs of those moments, so he will continue capturing and sharing them with his paintbrush. Thank you, Dave, for your time and for donating several of your beautiful paintings to the Wisconsin Maritime Museum. In this week's featured artifact, the museum's resident tool nerd, Kendra Lawrence, returns to explain why metalwork is worth a closer look. So today, I would want to talk a little bit about some of the crusty old bits of iron that we've got sort of just laying around, not laying around, but on display in our exhibits. What we have side by side here is a big iron cleat and a large iron chain. If you look closely on this chain, you'll see a series of lines throughout it. There are parallel lines um, that kind of cut into the surface of the iron. These are called stringers. Stringers are a result of impurities in the iron as it's being formed and molded into the shape that they need it. When we see stringers on a piece of iron, that tells us that it is wrought iron, that it was made out of a bar of metal and hammered into shape using various tools. By contrast, when we find cast iron, you usually don't see stringers like that. It usually preserves a lot better and has a much smoother surface. Cast iron is made by melting down the iron and then pouring it into a mold. What we can learn by comparing these two types of iron artifacts is we can make guesses about when they were made. So cast iron really took off in America in about the 1870s during the Industrial Revolution. And by the 1900s, America was producing so much cast iron. So we can say that this iron cleat probably was formed sometime after probably 1870, 1880, maybe even into the 1900s. 
By contrast, this iron chain probably predates that 1870s date. I think these artifacts are pretty cool because even though we don't have a ton of information about where they came from, we can look at them really closely and gather clues about how they were made, where they were made, and make guesses about the times that they were made. Thanks, Kendra. Now, our joke of the day brings in someone else who is into heavy metal, my brother-in-law, Michael Wesley. Happy birthday, Mike. Let's hear that joke. Why couldn't the sailors play cards? Because the captain was standing on the deck. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Mike. It sounds like a game for those sailors is just not in the cards. Just a reminder. No matter how bad things may seem, at least the Green Bay Packers are back in the NFC Championship game. And that is pretty good news. <laughs>